No, y'all, can we talk about it? Can we please talk about it? Let's take a moment to discuss. Let's take a moment to debrief. Let's take a moment to unpack. So I'm not really understanding why they're not telling y'all. Like, we all know that the world is behind, like, you know, globally, like, you know, because of the pandemic and stuff. But I don't understand why they're not stressing to y'all how bad it is. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny, but these kids are... I'm going to just say this. I teach seventh grade. They are still performing on the fourth grade level. I don't care how you flip it, turn it, swing it, swing it, swindle it. They still performing on the fourth grade level. Ain't nobody talking about how they just keep moving, passing them on. They just keep passing them on, 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 passing them on. I can put as many zeros in this grade book as I want to. They're going to move that child to the eighth grade next year. Many school districts have a policy where no kid left behind and they pushing these kids through. And like you said, during the pandemic, you had these kids trying to learn virtual. We seen all the videos of kids going to sleep, playing their video games, disrespecting the teacher, getting high. Everything you could think of. These are same, some of the same kids who couldn't pay attention in the classroom, let alone in the home environment where you could just sleep, lay in your bed, and be on the computer. There's no way to really tell if they really get the information. And then you I think the system wasn't ready for that when we went virtual because it was one of those things we had to do to keep it going. And in reality, we lost a year for our kids in these inner cities and stuff like that. They couldn't afford to miss a day, let alone a whole year. But they just shuffle these kids alone along in what they call promotions. So um, a lot of cities and cities and districts get their money based on how the kids are doing. So even in Baltimore. They was just pushing kids along. It was like a big thing. It came out. They were just passing kids that was failing. But one of the reasons that the, the teachers did that is not because they wanted to do that, but the principal of the school and stuff was changing test grades and different things like that so they could continue to get the funding they need based on the performance of the kids. The downside of that is when these kids get out in the world and it's time to fill out a job application or this comprehension skills, it just not, it's just not going to happen. It's like lying on the application. Again, when these kids fail, who does it benefit? That adds to the prison industrial uh, system where kids go from through, down the pipeline of public schools to prison. Because a lot of times schools got to deal with a whole lot of other stuff that the teacher shouldn't have to. They bring in all the problems to school. They pick counselors there. The counselors can't really deal with these problems effectively because once they leave that school, there's nothing else they can do. They can only hope that. Whatever they gave them stuck, and it's no different with the information they're trying to teach these kids. You combine that with smartphones and everything that's going out in the world, in the streets, and, like, these kids cannot pay attention. So now what you're seeing is the result of that and what this teacher's saying, and he is getting a lot of backlash for telling the truth. Nobody talking about that. Why they not talking about that? Why they not telling y'all that y'all... And why don't y'all know... That y'all kids not performing on their grade level. Why y'all don't know this? Why y'all don't know? Talk about it. Let's unpack. You're right. Because a lot of parents in their day-to-day, -day, either they on their phone and they're not checking their kids' homework. They're not asking them, how was your day? Um, let me. What happened in school today? A lot of times, and that's not all parents, but enough to is though this guy, I'm pretty sure all across the country, people can relate to what he's saying. Ask yourself, when the last time you checked your kid notebook? When you ask him to start really peeling the layers to see what's going on, that's to your surprise, you'll find out, hey, your kid is not functioning at the level they should. And it's it's but and it's not no you shouldn't really feel bad because you don't know what's going on in school. It's so many distractions, but it's our job to pay attention and follow up and catch them early so we can be the ones to fix whatever problem, get them tutoring, whatever the case may be. Cause here's the thing. You know, you're trying to be cool with these kids and all that stuff and be their friend. When they get out in this world and they illiterate and dumb, what choices are they going to have? What choices are they going to have? What? They get stuck at beginner jobs. They be at Walmart loading trucks somewhere. Doing, and there's nothing wrong with that. But they are not the jobs. But that's supposed to be like a stepping stone to something different. A lot of them commit, uh, commit to the life of crime, stealing, killing, selling drugs. And you know the end result of that. But guess what? The people who control these policies that bring the uh, uh the passing grade down to 60 and 50 because they think your kid's too dumb, that's not the standard that they have for their kids. That's the standard they have for your kids. And your kids will not be able to compete 
for the same jobs as their kids. It's just not going to happen. So that's going to always have a, you're going to have a lower, lower class when it comes to education and the education going to reflect what type of jobs and what type of life they're going to have versus the other kids with higher standards where this is not, is they don't even play about education. It's the most important thing. They're going to have a different lifestyle. And then what you're going to have a bigger divide. And on this side, you're going to have more crime, more illiteracy, there's breeding that. So now you're having people that's not educated, having kids, and you only know what you know. And I mean, it's 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 like a self-fulfilling thing to where it's though land is set up to where it's though we're just destroying ourselves because and, and and it's based on our circumstances and environment. But the main thing, the game changer is education, and that's what we failing at. And I'm glad he pointed this out. Because y'all be quick to talk about, oh, the teacher this, the teacher this, the teacher, it's your job, it's your job, baby. I just got here 30 days ago. She was performing on the fourth grade level since fourth grade. Why we not talk? Well, let's talk about it. You the teacher. You supposed to be, again, she's been on the fourth grade level since the fourth grade. We in seventh grade now, so you let this child go three years, and you never knew that your child was still in the fourth grade, ain't never left the... And in all fairness, a lot of parents, we trust the schools. We trust when we get that report card home that is telling, is a real reflection of what they're doing in school. And in a lot of cases, they be lying and changing grades and pushing these kids along. Because it's so much, because you got another year shuffling in, there's pressure on you. We trust the schools. But now we got to be woke and realize that we can't necessarily trust the schools. We got to um, take it upon ourselves to make sure our kids are functioning on a level that they need to and to be honest with you a lot of us know um when we do sit down and help some of these kids with their homework we know they ain't where they need to be but we neglect it we say we're going to do things and we don't and we put everything else first and life happens and the kids get put on the back burner but they should be the most important thing because they are our future and then again the education is going to reflect the lifestyle that they have and your legacy Hang it up, flat screen. And fourth graders being nice. I still have kids performing on grade K, one, two, and third grade levels. I could probably count on one hand how many kids are actually performing on a grade level. So just imagine, you don't know that your child been on the second grade level since the second grade, and they now in the seventh or eighth grade. Are you joking right now? And these are future leaders, our future doctors, our future nurses, our future. Please, please. He said it. He said it. He told the truth. He was cooking for real. And, that, and, and sometimes the truth is ugly. Nobody want to hear the truth, but it got to be told. It has to be told. We got to do a better job when it comes to raising our kids, man, and paying attention, checking their homework. I get that you had a long day. I get that, you know, your, your, your relationship problems. I get that it was stressful at work. But think about how all these different things that if you had a better education would have been different for you. You don't want that for your kids. You want better. So take that time out. Sacrifice whatever it is you think you need to do and focus on them. It take an hour or two a day. Follow up. Make sure they're doing what they do. Doing what they're supposed to do. Give them work off the internet. Hey, do this. Da, da, da. There's so many resources out there. The same way you can pick your phone up and watch some music. You want to watch your little, your little corn. Whatever the case may be. Well, take the time and do what you need to do with these kids, man. Because they are the future. And they ain't got no future if they're not educated. They're going to always be the underclass. And it don't matter what your background is, what your race is. Education is, is very important. Focus on that. God love the kids more than you love everything else you're doing.